How do you talk to your kids about racism, about slavery, about COVID-19? Dr. Lulu is a local pediatrician here, and she has her own youth health center, Dr. Lulu's Youth Health Center, and she joins us live now in this KSAT Q&A. Thank you again for staying up late with us. The nada. I'm actually a night owl, so this is like my time. Okay. <laughs> now, now, Dr. Lulu is what you go by because I'm guessing you, you have suffered through people mispronouncing your name a lot. That and those are actually my initials. And the first L is for love, and the other three are my initials, so I'm good. Okay. <laughs> give me, okay. give me, give me your real name. My real name is Uchenna, and the best way to pronounce it is O O C H A Y. N N A H U C H E N A. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, perfect. Well, I'm just going to stick with Dr. Lulu. Yeah, so that, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so how how would you ex how do you explain slavery to a four year old child? Honestly, I wish we didn't have to explain slavery to a four year old child, and I think honestly, it depends on the child, and also depends on the relationship you have with your child. Most four year olds will not get it. But maybe, just maybe, you could use a pet if you have one and try to tell the child that imagine if this pet, which you know came against their own will, right? And then you put them in a cage and you starve them and you beat them up and you're really mean to them and you take their babies and you kill their babies. You have to really get honest and vulnerable with children. As hard as that sounds to say, it doesn't even compare really to what was done to humans, like babies being thrown to alligators and things like that. But prepare your child for the worst news ever. Like, you know, it's like giving them a, a, an alarm, like, listen, what I'm going to tell you is going to be really, 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 really bad. But people like us actually did it, like, did it to people like so-and-so, like if they have a black friend or a black neighbor or something, put names to the, to the stories you tell them, and then use us and we, because it's more like it brings it home, as opposed to there are bad people out there. Say people like us, like mom and dad, like grandpa and grandma, not necessarily us, but people like us. It's important that they know that there's a difference in, in the skin color. And of course, they're, they're gonna ask you, well, mom, well, why, why did you guys do that? Because some people can be really, really mean. If it's a four-year-old, they can be really, really mean. And it's not good, tell them right away that it's not good. And I don't want you to ever do that. Be honest and be vulnerable. That's the only thing I can, and you can even cry if you have to, because it's a sad story, because your child is gonna be like, mom, I'm so sorry. Yes, it's something really bad that we did to them. And in that way, the child can go to school the next day and be nice to that black kid who may also not, may, the, the next person might not be getting that story being told to them. So that your child going to school and saying, look, you can't say that to him anymore because I'm his friend or I'm her friend can begin the, 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 the healing, yeah. for lack yeah. of a better word. You know, yeah. vul vulnerability and honesty yeah. can work in so many different, in so many yeah. different ways. You know, Dr. Lulu, during the break, I was mentioning to you that I'm a mom of three. My kids age, range in age from two years old all the way to five years old. And I feel like for my oldest, he's at a really interesting age. He's really inquisitive. He just finished his, his uh, kindergarten year. How I'm finding my struggle as a mom is how do I find the age appropriate words to talk to him at that age? And when is the best age to start talking to them about some of these issues? Do you want a truth from one adult to another? Yes. There are no words. Yeah. Because of how gruesome it is. There are no words, honestly. And sometimes you have to tell your child that there are no words. English language, first of all, is devoid of many, many words. In my language, I can probably come up with a word but in English language, there are just no words. And so tell your child that what they did was so bad, I can't even explain it to you. Use those words because mm -hmm. at kindergarten, your child knows how to talk already. At four years old, they can have full sentences. Tell them that there are no words to explain it. And indeed, the, the answer to the first, quite, the first half of the question is, kindergarten is the best time to start explaining to them because now they're going out into the world. They are seeing other people. They are seeing how people treat other people. They are seeing that maybe one kid, it doesn't even have to be a black kid. It could be a Muslim. It could be, you know, a, a Hispanic. It could be a different mm -hmm. color child. It doesn't have to be black, white. It's just that there's a differential treatment. And that's what you want your child to know from home. Like, no, you can, I can't do that to you because I'm not going to do it to Bobby or I'm not going to do it to, to Cindy. Use what you have 
You know, that's that's all you got because you may not have a black person living in your house. Maybe the neighbor is a black person. Maybe you want to walk up to them and, and let your child see you apologizing or asking them, how are you really doing with all of this? Let your child see you acting out what you want them to do, right? That's the best way to teach a child by action. They will learn more from what you do than from anything that you can say, especially when you don't have the words to say them, Yeah. right? Yeah. Now, timing is everything, and I know that we, we caught you right as you're about to release your third book, which has to do with how do you talk to kids about racism, right? And we, we showed the website, too, for Dr. Lulu's Youth Health Center, and there's some resources on there. But talk a little bit about your, your new book that's out there and just kind of the, gen, the general idea of it. The general idea. So, so this book was actually a blog that I wrote that went viral. And while it was going on its way to viral, world, somebody said, this will make a good book. So essentially what I did was I wrote 15 commandments of how to teach a child, how to talk to your child about race relations is the, is the original name of the blog. And I came up with 15 commandments because I figured some people just need commandments. Like I command you to do this and then maybe you do it. So the top five, for instance, is first of all, educate yourself, right? Like my wife likes to say, educate yourself. Educate yourself about the things you need to know about racism. Go back to Jim Crow. Go and read those painful things. Prepare to be shocked. Like get ready to have those uncomfortable discussions because it's going to be very uncomfortable. And then find out what your child already knows. While your four-year-old child might not know it yet, your 12-year-old child does. They're talking about it. Your 22-year-old son does. Your 32-year-old child definitely does. So depending on the age of the child, find out what they know. You know, start the conversation already. I would like the spark, but I need you to carry the fire and go with it. So the third thing, for instance, is learning, for instance, something like foreign languages. Just something as simple as saying hola to the next person because you want to, just to kind of make them feel like they're welcome. If they're Muslim, say, Assalamu alaikum. Things like that will just make the person feel, oh, wow, I'm welcome. Let your child see you. Be deliberate about it. Be intentional. Be mindful about it. Let your child actually see you doing these things. Because I can tell you everything from now till tomorrow, but if you're not acting it, your little SpongeBob is not gonna, is not gonna absorb it. So I want you, you to know that your kids are SpongeBobs and SpongeBobettes. That's what they do. They absorb everything that you show them much more so than what you tell them, right? That is so true. Yes. Actions, and, yes. actions speak louder than words. Thank you so oh, much. Right. And I'm going to buy those books on Amazon. Hopefully you can autograph them for me at some place down right. the road. So that's Thank just you so the, much. That's her third book that's just coming out about oh, how to yeah. talk to kids about well, racism. Numero uno is how to raise well-rounded children yes. on Amazon. And numero dos is a teen's life. This one is my baby. It just came out in, in December. It's about teen suicide. I'll come back next week. Wink, wink, and talk about this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you go. Well, we'll <laughs> definitely you, have Dr. you back. Lulu. Dr. Lulu, I appreciate your time. And again, thank you for staying up late with us. De nada, de nada. All right, take care. We'll be right back.